The Japanese government put morons in charge of the Diamond Princess quarantine. They went full retard. And you should never go full retard. You went full retard, man. Never go full retard. Japan bungled the cruise ship quarantine so badly that Japan is now almost certain to have a big outbreak of the Wuhan coronavirus, forcing them to cancel the Tokyo Olympics that begin this summer. This proves that our biggest threat might not be the evil intentions of our government, but the absolute incompetence and stupidity of elected officials. These people are dumber than a box of rocks, and I can hardly believe it. Welcome to the Shockcast. I'm John Little, recording on a comfortable Chinon evening on Friday, February 21st, 2020. Before going on, hit subscribe and click that bell to receive a notification when the next Shockcast happens. And if you like what you hear, hit that button. The like button. All of that really helps to get visibility for Omega Shock and the Shockcast. And if you didn't like it, well, you know what to do. Also, subscribe to The Shock Letter and receive my articles in your inbox at theshockletter.com. You can also find my posts on Facebook and Twitter, and I have two books that you can read for free for now. They're called When Jacob Returns and Ezekiel's Fire. And believe it or not, there are ways to keep The Shock Letter from going to the spam folder or any other folder by following certain easy instructions. You can find links for all of that below. Now, let's get back to today's story. The Wuhan Coronavirus. Death by Stupidity, Japanese Style. Back when I was young and stupid, about 12 years ago, I used to think that governments were merely inefficient. That I w and that was before I took a contract to write computer manuals for the Indiana Department of Child Services. I love children, and the idea of helping the state of Indiana keep children from being abused seemed like a great idea. I needed a job. They needed a technical writer. It seemed perfect. Now they needed me because, now I want to clarify that they needed me because they were developing their own software in-house from scratch. It was a pretty big undertaking, and they hired a bunch of programmers and me to get the job done. And since I already had many years of experience writing some of the most technical manuals out there, I thought that this job would be pretty easy. Boy, was I wrong. Up to that point, I had never done any work for any government of any kind, so I was completely unprepared for what I would hear in my first business meeting with the woman overseeing this project. She wanted to change features to the software during a code freeze just before a new release. I was so shocked that my jaw hung open for what it felt like half the meeting. This poor, brain-damaged woman continued to make decisions like this until I almost couldn't take it. It was so soul-destroying that I once called my lovely wife at her job and told her that I wanted to move to Greenland. No, really, Greenland. When she told me that it's really cold there, I looked for the other most isolated place on Earth to get away from all the morons that were driving me crazy. I hit on the Pitcairn Islands, and it sounded lovely until I found out that morons live there too. Then the Lord sent us off to Israel, which allowed me to quit my job on Christmas Eve 2009, my best Christmas present ever. Not long after I left, the whole project collapsed under the weight of the accumulated incompetence of the department manager. But I'm betting that she kept her job. In government, the morons keep their jobs while the competent are driven away. That's why when my wife told me to do a search for Kentaro Iwata, I was not unprepared for what I would find. My life-scarring and soul-destroying experience with government incompetence helped me understand what few people could ever know. Governments are full of stupid people. The more powerful they are, the more stupid they will be. But I'm getting ahead of myself. My search turned up a certain Dr. Kentaro Iwata, professor of infectious diseases at Kobe University. 
and he had just published a video about his personal journey to find out what was happening on the cruise ship Diamond Princess, the one that was under quarantine for the Wuhan coronavirus. I'd been wondering about how it was possible for so many new cases to break out on this ship when it was supposed to be under quarantine. My wife and I had been trading theories about air ducts and food handling and doorknobs for days until we saw Dr. Iwata release his YouTube video. I was absolutely shocked at how stupid the Japanese had been in their handling of this cruise ship. Instead of making this a quarantine operation, they had created a coronavirus breeding and propagand propagation fat laboratory. It was almost as if they wanted the Wuhan coronavirus to spread throughout Japan. Of course, those of you who like to cook up a good conspiracy theory will jump at the chance to claim that this is some diabolical attempt at population reduction, but it's not. The people in charge of this operation are too stupid to think like that, and everything that I heard Kentaro Iwata say brought back memories of that horrible experience of having been on the inside of the Indiana state government. First, let's get to what Professor Iwata actually had to say. And his video, or should I say, the one that I include as the first video in this article is called The Facts of Coronavirus and Diamond Princess by Kentaro Iwata. Subtitles are in simplified Chinese for those on main, in mainland China. Now, before getting into the specifics of this video, notice you will notice the fuzziness that's, and that's because this video has been downloaded and then re-uploaded onto a different YouTube channel. And I never post a video like this unless I have no other choice, since I'm strongly against the theft of someone else's work. So why am I posting, or why did I post, this copy of the original? Well, let's try to look for the original. The title of the original that he posted, that Dr. Kentaro Iwata posted was uh, titled, quote, Diamond Princess is COVID-19 mill, how I got in the ship and was removed from it within one day. And oops, he was forced to take it down. I remember thinking that when I first bookmarked the video, that it pro I probably needed to download that video. But I waved that thought aside as, being just a bit too cynical. Well, now I know. Next time, I'll listen to that little voice a little more intently. The Japanese government forced Professor Iwata to take down this, his video because it made them look stupid and incompetent, which is exactly the kind of thing that a stupid and incompetent government would try to do. Kentaro Iwata claims that he took down this video of his own volition, but you and I aren't stupid. But just to dot all the I's and cross all the T's, here is Kentaro's explanation for taking down the video. Quote from Twitter, I removed my YouTube clip myself since there is no need for further discussing this. Thank you and I apologize to those who got involved in. He's Japanese. Did you notice that he apologized? He apologized. Right. He was forced. By the way, Mrs. Little has a lot of experience working with and for the Japanese, in addition to her mom having become Japanese. Japanese culture is all about face, as in preserving it, and the thought of dishonoring your rulers is just unthinkable. But you and I aren't so culturally shackled to a need to worship our dear overlords, so let's rub their faces in their foolishness. Think of it as a public duty. Now, where was I? Oh yes, for those of you who missed some of the details of just how stupid Japanese officials were, let's go through their stupidity in detail as told by Professor Iwata. And we should start with those who tried to stop this brave professor. And yes, he showed real courage. Notice who was blocking Professor Iwata, supervisors and department heads. Those officials operating in the field thought that having him along was a good idea, 
But those in middle and upper management within the Japanese bureaucracy handling this debacle probably thought that Dr. Iwata would see some things that they would want to have covered up. And this professor was blocked three times before succeeding in getting onto the ship. First, the infectious disease bureaucrats blocked him. Then disaster management bureaucrats blocked him. Finally, someone in the Japanese government smuggled him onto the ship by having him work as an assistant to a physician. Once he got onto the ship, the DMED officer in charge of the operation was all too happy to have him on board assisting with the attempt to stop the infection from spreading. They actually wanted him there, which shows that the people actually doing the job had no idea about how badly they were doing it. This is very, very important to remember because people who love a good hoax will try to claim that the spread of the Wuhan coronavirus was intentional. It was not. And it is definitely not. The Japanese officials on that ship really were doing their best, but were completely incompetent. The same goes for the department head that I worked for in the state of Indiana, who single-handedly destroyed millions of dollars of work. Government officials literally do not know how stupid they are. At least, how stupid they are at their job. Now, let's get into just how stupid these people were on this ship. First of all, no distinction was made between zones of infection on the ship. There was no quarantine area on the ship that kept the infected passengers away from the non-infected passengers. Passengers, crew, and officers were mingling freely. Dr. Iwata saw that people were just walking around. People were gathering together to eat, some with their protection suits on and some even with their possibly contaminated gloves still on. At this point in the video, I just lost it. I could not believe that anyone could be so stupid. You wear a protection suit, a PPE, because you will be operating in contaminated areas and this means that the outer layer of your suit will be contaminated. Not might be, but will be. From this alone, the infection will have spread to other passengers and crew. Will, not might, will. The only question is in how many of these people will come down with the Wuhan pneumonia. Seriously, I just can't believe this. Before hearing Dr. Iwata speak, I had been envisioning a careful process of containment where people stay in their cabins and are careful to not interact with each other. I was also assuming that those who were directly involved with the passengers would follow standard quarantine procedures. All of this was just before the five-minute mark in Professor Iwata's video. Then up to that moment, my darling dearest was telling me that the good part is coming. The good part is coming as I was watching this video. And I probably did a bit of a grr and a shush. But when I got to the part where the passengers and crew mingled, she got a chance to see me explode, which is what she was looking for. I am entertaining at times. Then there were crew members with fevers. Those crew members that came down with fevers walked to the medical office without protection and interacted with the medical officer without protection. In the more than 20 years in which he had been on the ground involved with infectious disease outbreaks in Africa and Asia, dealing with Ebola, cholera, and SARS, Dr. Iwata had never been afraid for his own safety. Wherever he was, he knew how to protect himself and others, so he was never afraid. But inside the Diamond Princess cruise ship, he was truly frightened for the first time. Think that through. This guy had been in the middle of the worst outbreaks of the past 20 years. He had never been afraid while being in the middle of those terrible epidemics. But he was afraid while on the Diamond Princess. It's one thing for you and me to say something like this. We aren't experts. We don't have 20 years of experience dealing with the worst epidemics in the world. This guy is an expert. He has the experience and he was very afraid. Looking around himself, he knew that there was no way that he could know where the virus was and was not. And the number one reason for why this was the case lies in one very simple statement. 
because the bureaucrats were in control. Infected paper forms were being passed from hand to hand. His suggestions for basic protections for staff were rebuffed. Eventually, they threw him off the ship. There was not a single infectious disease control specialist on that ship. Not a single one. Wow. The bottom line is this. Everyone who gets off of the Diamond Princess cruise ship has been contaminated in one way or another by this virus. Every single one. We just don't know who will be infected and come down with the pneumonia that the Wuhan coronavirus causes. Even Professor Kentaro Iwata knows that he is probably contaminated. And he's afraid for himself and his family. He's also afraid for his country. All the people who were on that ship will spread throughout Japan, going back to their communities, families, and jobs. They will use public transportation, and this disease will spread. So now that we know this, we need to be watching Japan. We need to be praying for those Japanese, especially our brothers and sisters who are there. And we need to be watching to see if this epidemic takes off in Japan. Ultimately, this is an important lesson in human stupidity. History is full of such lessons, and it's amazing that we never seem to learn from them. We don't need some vast global conspiracy to destroy the world. Human insanity and foolishness is far, far more destructive than any elite cabal could hope to be. Yes, there are conspiracies. I'm not denying that. Just look at 9-11. And one day, a conspiracy will put a horrible person that we call the Antichrist into power. In fact, you should watch my favorite video on conspiracy, and it's called JFK to 9-11, Everything is a Rich Man's Trick. If you haven't watched that, you need to stop what you are doing and click play. Just make sure that you have three and a half hours to spend on it. The only part that he gets wrong is religion, and he even give, gets some of that correct. However, the one thing that he gets particularly incorrect the most is this. No conspiracy will ever be as deadly as stupidity. Well, that's it for this shot cast. If you appreciated this video, hit like. Then hit subscribe and that little bell. Also, leave a comment. I look forward to seeing what you have to say about what was said here. Your input is truly welcome. You can also get my articles and updates in your inbox through the shock letter at theshockletter.com and read my books for free, When Jacob Returns and Ezekiel's Fire. They just might save your life.